Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is San Diego Design Week. Thank you so much for being here with us. If this is your first Design Week event, uh, we are on day two of a five-day festival to celebrate interdisciplinary design in our region. So our community over the last year or so has gathered together to create over 120 programs that range from San Diego to Tijuana. There were live talks and workshops and self-guided tours around town that you can check out. Uh, so there's a lot to experience. So head over to uh, sddesignweek.org to check it out. Uh, thank you so much to Ninge International Museum um, who, who really uh, planted the seed and let this all bloom in San Diego. So we are so appreciative um, of your support. And, um, you know, as, as we start to think about, you know, celebrations in our city this week, um, we did want to take a moment and acknowledge that San Diego is a city on occupied land. And we would like to pay our respect uh, to the Kumeye people, past, present, and future, who have stewarded this land for generations. And there continue to be very real threats to this sacred culture here in San Diego. So uh, please check out the links in the chat that Liz is gonna drop to learn more. Um, and we encourage everybody to share more links uh, in the chat as well so we continue to learn and grow and join in solidarity with this tribe. So thank you very much for that. So with that in mind, let's talk about design for social good. Um, you know, just a couple thoughts I wanted to share as we kind of launch into our program tonight. And I know I've talked about this before um, in past events and presentations, but you know, what I love so much about our role as designers is really this ability to shape and mold the world that's around us. You know, the things we create as designers uh, have very real effects on what we think and how we live and how we engage with those around us. So there's this, there's this very real power to what we have and what we do as creatives. And I think that there's tremendous opportunity to use these skills to really celebrate and center the voices of those who deserve to be uplifted. And you know, even if it's not something you do full time, this is definitely something you can do on a weekend. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, tonight, we're going to share with you this amazing project that we just wrapped this past weekend. It's a, it was a 48-hour design sprint event in which 15 creatives from SD, LA, Chicago, Austin, Dallas, Cleveland, uh, I think, Liz, and, and Chile <laughs> got together to show the love and lift up an incredible cause here in San Diego through design. We were incredibly and are incredibly honored to, um, to be partners with the March for Black Women San Diego. Uh, they are a collective of incredibly courageous and amazing organizers who are working towards the liberation of all Black women. And in a minute, we will welcome Kelsey Daniels and Jordan Hales to tell us a little bit more. And so uh, I'm sure that some of you are thinking, what, <laughs> what could you possibly create in 48 hours that's so good you need to create a whole event to talk about it? Well, <laughs> you are in luck. You are about to find out. Um, and we are so excited to share uh, what we learned, what we did, the highs and lows, and of course, some exceptional design work uh, with you tonight. So um, to kick us off, I'd love to uh, have our panelists introduce themselves and uh, tell us a little bit about um, who you are, where you're from, and what your ro role was in this sprint this last weekend. Uh, so to start, um, I'm Stacey Edelstein, co-founder of Raygun. Um, Reagan is also uh, an official partner of San Diego Design Week. I'm an advisor for San Diego Design Week, and I organized this event and the sprint in collaboration with Good Measure. And speaking of Good Measure, Liz Wilson. 
Wonderful. Yeah, I'm Liz. I'm the digital design director for Good Measure. I also helped to kind of organize and create this sprint with these fine people, Stacy and Rodrigo. And then kind of during the weekend, we were just making sure everything was getting done, trying to keep track of the schedule, all the incredible designers and their work um, are creatives, not just designers. So yeah, Rodrigo. Yo, thank you, Liz. Uh, I'm Rodrigo Calderon. Uh, I am nonprofit lead and a design director at Good Measure. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to be a part of San Diego Design Week. Um, I guess we'll just leave it at that. Uh, Liz kind of covered it for us. We just kind of were, were back there making sure that the wheels were turning on the sprint. And uh, it was an honor to, to work with amazing people such as Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Cobbs. I am the founder of a branding, marketing and communication strategy firm called Crate Agency. Uh, and I was really excited to be able to join this amazing design sprint. Thank you, Chessa. I'll toss it over to you. Hey everyone, I'm Chessa Garbett. I am the founder and creative director at Firebrand Creative House, which is a branding and UX studio. Um, and my role on the team this past weekend was as the design lead for, um, for all of our incredible designers. And let's kick it over to Kelsey and Jordan, our amazing partners at the March for Black Women San Diego. Say hello. Hi, y'all. My name is Kelsey Daniels. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a co-organizer for March for Black Women San Diego um, and founder of Black Women Save My Life, which is an offshoot of March for Black Women San Diego. Jordan. Hello, hola everybody. Um, my name is Jordan Hales. I'm a Southern girl from Mobile, Alabama, recent uh, transplant to San Diego. Um, and I'm a co-organizer for March for Black Women San Diego. Nice to meet you all. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Well, this amazing group of people along with 10 other organization or 10 other folks were the ones who created the work this weekend. Um, and so we wanted to thank a couple, um, couple of our, our organizations here, our friends and family, um, our friends at Raygun, my creative studio. We are based out of the San Diego Mate Factory in Logan Heights. Uh, we work exclusively with um, causes and nonprofits through strategy, design, and technology. So please come and visit us when it's safe to do so. <laughs> Otherwise, you can email me. Um, yeah, and we were, we were very proud to, to be a part of this. So I guess I'll just say a couple words about Good Measure. Uh, you'll see our website down there. That's our IG handle, Good Measure. We're a pop-up agency. Uh, we show up to different cities where we used to physically show up to different cities in the United States and, and put on these 72 hour sprints for good. Um, in addition to the sprints for good, we also uh, are involved in other uh, advocacy projects. Uh, we did a, a great advocacy project on, on gun violence called 100 Every Day, just as an example. We also put on a conversation series called Homebodies. Uh, we also have an amazing newsletter that you should uh, subscribe to. But we're, we're a growing team. We've got about eight or nine members that are sprinkled throughout the United States and, and now the world. And uh, what we do is essentially uh, find partners uh, that will uh, allow us to use their space and, uh, it, and invite as many uh, great uh, like, like-minded individuals in the creative field to come and, and do some, some crazy work over 72 hours, in this case, 48 hours, but that's good measure. And you can't see the new logo just yet, but you will. Cens censored. 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 <laughs> um, so, hey, uh, like I said, my name is Kelsey. I'm a co-organizer of March for Black Women in San Diego. Um, we got our start in 2017 um, as a response to uh, Black Women's Blueprint, which is a New York-based organization putting out a call for March for Black Women. Um, and we've been rocking in San Diego ever since, uh, creating space for uh, Black women to feel seen and heard and advocate for themselves. 
Beautiful. Thank you, Kelsey. So now that you know who we are, you might be asking, what is a design sprint? So Rodrigo, can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what exactly is a design sprint? What goes into this? Um, yeah. Some of the folks who may have not participated in one before. <laughs> Well, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's 72 chaotic, frantic hours. It's a combination of, a lot of people say it's like a summer camp uh, where you kind of just huddle up with strangers. Uh, you get real close. Uh, once again, COVID days, that's not something we're doing now, but um, it's just a lot of like-minded individuals that are coming together uh, for the greater good. So a design sprint is essentially that. We, we have our nonprofit or the organization that we're helping out, they come and then they explain exactly what their needs are, what it is that they're looking for. And we put together a team that's gonna help them uh, meet those, uh, those goals or at least give them uh, some creative tools at the end of the weekend that are gonna help them out with their sprint. Um, this is our sixth project. Um, uh, we're, and it happens to be our second one in San Diego, that smooth uh, little animation there will show you a picture <laughs> from when we were at uh, BASIC. So we've actually worked with some amazing partners. BASIC is a uh, very good friends of Good Measure. When we were in San Diego, they were the ones who hosted it. We also had some support from Grizzly. Shout out to Grizzly. Shout out to Classy.org. They helped us out too. And shout out to the Mega Museum who uh, sponsored this amazing mural that we put together uh, uh, with uh, AJ Rowe is a good friend of Good Measure and a local uh, muralist, Shannon Fulton, who's uh, one of the, the, the best uh, artists in San Diego, in my opinion. Uh, but so, yeah, that's kind of what the sprint is. It's just insanity. Uh, you've got design leads, you've got designers, you've got copywriters, you've got strategists. Sometimes we have video producers, sometimes we have camera people, sometimes we have web developers. It, it all depends, but it is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's, uh, it's lightning in a bottle, it's the magic and the challenge, it's a lot of different things. Uh, it's, it, it's magical though. So, so what was the, the difference this about our, this yeah. one? <laughs> what made this one different, yeah. Rodrigo? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see, uh, these are some shots that uh, some of our volunteers posted on the Slack channel. You see some furry friends here on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. Uh, normally in a 72 hour sprint, we'll have like an open call and people will just like sign up, you know, all over the place. But since we knew that this sprint needed to be a little bit smaller, we knew that the, uh, that the time frame was a little bit shorter. We went ahead and uh, it sent out invites to, to people that we wanted to be involved in this, in this specific sprint. Um, so even though it was 48 hours, we were still able to get a lot done. Uh, and we're really excited to kind of share that work. But, you know, um, it was the first one. This is very much like a pilot program for us. Uh, and we hope that, you know, we'll take the lessons from this, the good and the bad, and, and hopefully do more of these. And uh, if you're a designer or creative out there and you want to participate in this, I highly uh, recommend that you try it and you do so. And so we'll connect later about how you can do that. But yeah, so it was crazy, just in the sense that everybody's got, you know, I don't know. I don't know how we did it. Uh, so let's, let's, <laughs> well, let's find out how we did it. How about we find out how we did it, Stace? Let's <laughs> find out how we did this and, and why do this. Um, you know, we, one thing to mention sort of about adapting like in-person sprints to the virtual space is, was a really interesting challenge in and of itself, right? So, um, you know, we relied on tools like Slack for messaging, Google Drive for storage, uh, Zoom for, you know, conferencing and, and uh, meeting with our teams as well as meeting with our wonderful client. Uh, Jordan and Kelsey. Uh, so a lot of that, you know, all of the work we were doing was all completely virtual. Um, leading up to the sprint, we did spend time with Kelsey and Jordan to uh, create a, a creative brief, um, which outlined, you know, the, the current um, kind of comms and marketing branding challenges they were facing. So that once the weekend started on Saturday, our creatives kind of had something to work from. And we could, you know, we could kind of take off from there. Um, but how we worked and, and what we produced was really all up to the creative starting Saturday morning, ending Sunday night. So it was uh, a little bit of um, an experiment in a way to see how we could make this all work. And so then, yes, the question comes up, why would you do this? Why would you, why would you roll the dice for 48 hours? Um, that's a very interesting question. Um, 
why did we do this, Rodrigo? Normally, uh, I would say it's so that we can build the design community and connect with like-minded people who understand that we're living through crazy times, scary times, divisive times. And uh, sometimes you just feel a little bit helpless and you want to do something. And uh, by putting together an event like this, uh, you're sending a signal out to people. You're saying, hey, do you give a shit? You should. Here's an opportunity. Let's do something good together. Uh, I think community is probably the number one reason that people want to do this. You know, a little bit of networking on the side, I'm sure, but mostly community. Um, we believe that a little bit of good is always worth it. And I think that's why we do this. Mm -hmm. And I feel, too, one of the things that I've loved about, this is my third good measure sprint. And mm -hmm. what I feel the outcome is, is that it, it feels like it really creates impact for the cause or the nonprofit that, that you work with. Um, because we're not just designing kind of a one-off, you know, postcard or an event invitation. We're really helping them build their brand foundation and give them the tools in which, um, you know, tools that they can use in order to um, broaden their, their reach and, and, you know, expand their own communities. So for me, it's always been about finally, this is something I feel that has, can, can create actual change using the skills that I have as a, as a designer and want to be writer, right? Like I, I truly think this, this type of model has, has so much like going for it that it's very exciting. Yeah, I think the buzzword of disruptive model gets thrown around a lot, but this is quite disruptive in the sense that, um, you know, if you have your agency job, your industry job as a creative, you, you do your Monday through Friday, you've got your clients that you work with, and sometimes you just kind of feel a little bit, you know, like, is this it? Like, is this, is this why I'm working? Uh, not speaking personally, I've had amazing experiences at agencies <laughs> and studios, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, if, if, that's, if, that's, if that sounds a little bit true to you, then maybe you'll get like why you would do this too. It's like yeah. an opportunity to actually get back into why you got into this in the first place. There's a lot of power in, in, in creativity and, and being able to lend that to, to a worthy cause. I think it's mm -hmm. is a, another reason why we do this. And it's a twofold thing. Like the, the nonprofit partner gets, gets the opportunity to work with us and we get the opportunity to, to get their energy and, and to feel them and, and, and to help them out and, and to know that we played a, a role in this. So without without saying anymore i kind of feel like people are, are curious they want to yeah. they want to see the results well, stacy <laughs> i know but i did want to hear from lauren and and chessa though like wh when you heard about this what were your what were your initial thoughts like were you just like these people are crazy nothing can happen in that short amount of time like how did you feel about it Okay, I guess I'll go first, Jessica. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I knew what to expect. Uh, I think in terms of expectations, you don't think that you can completely redesign uh, and represent an entire brand in 48 hours. Um, and I was just like, well, am I really going to give up my whole weekend for something that I don't think is plausible? <laughs> I was like, you know what? Uh, what was the selling factor? Was the client? Uh, was it me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. It was close. <laughs> close second. Close enough. <laughs> it was. It was really the client. It was an opportunity uh, to kind of donate my skills and the marketing and uh, strategy and copyright to an organization that I personally really believed in, and the work that they do uh, is equity based uh, and that's something that I strongly am passionate very passionate about is equity advocacy uh, and so I figure you know if you're if you're going to do anything at this time to Rodrigo's point like this is this is a type of work that I want to be working on uh, so that's why I did it um, totally agreed and ditto on the things that Lauren said um, I've done a lot actually of writing and talking around um, social good design and particularly around um, this movement and and how we participate and how we move forward and um, Rodrigo and Stacy can attest to this but when they came to me and said hey you know we're working with 
um, March for Black Women San Diego, I, <laughs> I point blank said to them, cool, um, how many black women are on the team? Like we need, we need, it's so critical. We need to make sure that the people who this is for are represented in the room making these decisions as we're moving quickly, as we're um, moving with intuition. And I was so excited and pleased to hear that they were like, yeah, actually, <laughs> this team is incredibly diverse. There are a lot of black women working on this, um, which uh, is such a treat. It's such, it was such a treat to be in the room with these incredible creatives and hear directly from them. Um, and made the entire weekend so much more magical. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, Jordan and Kelsey, I'm, I'm sort of curious when we approached you with this idea of, of kind of working with us for a weekend, um, what, what were your initial reactions to, to kind of going in, into this experience? Well, I, I love a sprint. I'm always looking for a sprint because it's a clear start date. It's a clear end date and there's not much time in between. Those are beautiful elements to me. Um, you know, the middle for me is often very, uh, uh, you know, it, it can be a little difficult. So with it being that short amount of time, I was excited. Um, and also just having seen, having met you, Stacy, um, you know, that automatically gave me a bit of confidence. I'm like, okay, all right, this, this is the direction that I think we should go in. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think um, I think it took a little bit of imagination on everyone's part to to really think about how we can make this work. And I also think that you know asking those really direct questions about you know who who is on this team, you know who who is in this circle, and and are we going to be able to do right by our client? Um, I think is a really important question that we not only need to ask ourselves. Um, when we're serving in a, a wonderful cause like the March for Black Women, but it's a question we need to ask ourselves every single day. You know, who has access? Um, what are we doing every single day to, to change that, um, especially in our industry that is very, very predominantly white? Um, you know, it's, it's something that I, um, you know, I believe is, is so important. And speaking to, you know, what Lauren said earlier about, you know, equity, equity and design, we've got a really long way to go, people. So um, I hope that by this time next year at San Diego Design Week, um, we have a lot more to, to share on that topic. But without further ado, I know that everybody is very excited to see what actually happened after 48 hours of collaboration. Let's do this. Go. It's a go. All right. Um, I'd love to, Lauren, you want me to, to kick this off and then, and then kick it over to you? Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. All right. So um, at the outset, you know, I think something that's really important to think about with, with a sprint is that, you know, your team needs to have really clear direction on what's about to happen, right? Because you don't have a whole lot of time. And so going into the weekend, we made sure to connect with our client, to sit down with them, to really listen to them, to ask questions and to learn, you know, what were some of the ways that branding could help them in the work that they did. So um, we developed what, you know, we like to call our North Star. So our sort of overarching objective was to really help the March for Black Women elevate their story and connect with more Black women in our community here in San Diego. But, you know, ultimately, the most important thing that, that we can do as creatives and designers is, is to be there to really listen. Um, and so with that, um, that sort of led us into, into the weekend. We wanted to give a shout out to this incredible strategy and copy team. Uh, we're gonna call out the, the work we did as, as the strategy team to really lay the, the foundation for the brand. Uh, so we had Lauren, Kate, Cynthia, Amy, Sol Simone, Nikki, and Sarah from uh, all across this country who uh, collaborated on the strategy and copy team um, to really hear our client and develop um, a brand strategy and, and copy and messaging that would uh, help them not only uh, through this process of the weekend, but also 
uh, to you know really elevate how they talk about themselves on social media, the web, um, and just you know in community with one another. So we'll share some of the samples of our work that that we created, and I'd love to hand it over to Lauren uh, to talk a little bit about um, how we listened and how that influenced what we created. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Stacy. So. It was really important for us to listen um, and to kick off the work that we did by first acknowledging just how important the work that March for Black Women San Diego does. Uh, and so in our conversations with them, we really just kick it off by saying we acknowledge and honor the complexity and the courage of this work. You know, it's courageous to create and hold space for Black women who are often overlooked and intentionally silenced. It's courageous to demand what is rightfully yours and to do so in a way that is affirming and self-loving. We hear you. And that was really the purpose. Uh, it's our message to the organizers from March for Black Women is to say, we hear you today. We hear you throughout this process and we'll continue to listen to you so that we create a product that resonates and speaks true to you. All right, we can go to the next slide. Uh, and so in terms of the deliverables, we wanted to make sure that we delivered to the March for Black Women San Diego team a comprehensive uh, collection of manifestos, writings, long-term, short-term, uh, long copy, short copy that they could continue to use on multiple different media vehicles uh, and that would withstand the test of time throughout the collective. So we delivered a purpose statement, a manifesto. We rewrote their R story, the Y, the X, their four demands, uh, created a social campaign strategy that was centered around the premise and the tenets of Black joy, Black resistance, and Black community. OK. And in the process of listening, what we heard, um, which is why listening is so important, March for Black Women San Diego had a very clear identity of who they were at the crux and at the core. And so what was really easy on our end was all we had to do is kind of reframe it, um, condense it in some ways, expand it in some other ways so that we could show the full complexity of the organization. Uh, and so in terms of the manifesto, we really dive down to the base or the core rather of, we are a people power collective of black women committed to the liberation of all black women. Uh, and we celebrate joy and organize resistance for all those who identify as a black woman in the most encompassing definition of the term. Because as an aside, that is March for Black Women San Diego. That was one of the huge, one of their major, major parts of the organization is really the idea of whoever identifies as a Black woman, that that was a space and that is a space for them. And so we wanted to make sure that we highlighted, not only were, were they about demanding access and equity for all Black women, but they were also about celebrating and the joy that comes within, the res within resistance and in within community, okay? And so as the manifesto continues, we affirm that Black womanhood can present itself in many different ways because gender is simply a social construct and anyone who identifies with us belongs with us. So again, the community aspects. And we embrace and hold space for those whose lived experiences are different from our own. In honor of our ancestors' legacy, we serve as a sanctuary of support that shows all Black women love through action. Uh, and again, as an aside, a question, not a, rather not a question, but another point that the organizers really pushed through was loving through action. Uh, and so throughout this campaign and in the manifesto, and some of the other assets that we delivered was the idea of loving March for Black Women San Diego through action. Uh, and then finally, going back to their 
the core of who they are as again community and an open safe space for all black women to come as you are to be who you are because there is always space for you here okay and so with the manifesto we also redesigned some of the or redesign the demands. Uh, so March for Black Women have four demands that are centered on what Black women deserve. And we rewrote the demands so that they could be both an affirmation for the Black women that are a part of their community and also when seen externally, delivered as in a demand for what Black women should have already received, but what they must get moving forward. So the first demand, we redesigned was Black women deserve acknowledgement of past and present violence. The second, Black women deserve safety from violence, incarceration, and deportation. The third, Black women deserve access to quality health care. And the fourth, Black women deserve economic power. So as you see with these demands, if you are a Black woman that's a part of their collective, you can save them as an affirmation of what you what you deserve and if you are an accomplice with the march for black women san diego you can also say these demands as something that you hold to be true and that we all should hold true and evident thank right. you thank you thank so you. much lauren that's so good uh i'll go ahead and just introduce the design team here so that there was more to the strategy than that. Lauren read off all the different deliverables that we sent, but we just wanted to hit like the high notes here. Uh, we had a design team is awesome. Chessa, our design lead from Inglewood, Ashley, Jos uh, Josue, Ray, Elizabeth, Kendall, Daniela, Jamie, and I, oh, there's the one that's covering. It's covering. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. I have my little camera thingy and it yeah. kind of blocked the last name. Uh, anyways, so let's get to the design part. And for that, it is my privilege to present uh, Chessa uh, from Firebrand. And we're going to go ahead and allow her to take the screen now. So we might have like an awkward transition here, but I'm going to stop. Great. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Chessa, take it away. Okay, perfect. Look, this is so smooth. It's happening. <laughs> um, over awesome. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo, so much for uh, for passing it over to me. So um, you guys heard the incredible strategy through Lauren um, that we worked off of as a design team. And what we really wanted to come through in the visual design was um, that this is a space for all Black women. As the organization tries to, to reach more Black women, they re they said to us repeatedly, this is for women of all ages, this is for our little cousins, this is for our sisters, this is for our aunties and great aunties in San Diego, this is for women of all sizes, this is for women of all voices and passions, um, this is for loud black women, this is for quiet black women, this is for um, women who are incarcerated, women who are afraid of being deported, this is for black women who are sex workers. So we wanted, and this collective is non-hierarchical. Um, they talked about wanting to create a space where women could flow in and out of the center and be centered and seen and bring the talents and voices that they wanted to bring to the organization. Um, and just to have that be sort of an organic process that welcomed people in when they had the space and had the energy to share. So we wanted the visuals to reflect that. Um, this was the custom logo mark that we created for the movement. So you can see here that um, each letter is a little bit different and that represents that uh, there is no one way to be a black woman. Um, moving through and highlighting some of the different letters we wanted to make sure that people of different ages were represented as well. So some of the lowercase letters mixed into the, the logo type um, represent the youth in, in the community that are joining the marches and joining the collective, um, whereas the uppercase letters may represent the adults. 
um, in the W, we wanted to make sure uh, to represent the X in women, which was a really important way for the co-organizers and the community that they were creating to be inclusive of all sort of different ways of representing womanhood through gender expression, whether that's trans women, non-binary folks, women who are a mask of center. Um, and later on, you'll see that there's a letter mark that uses the W, but we wanted that X to be present within the W as well. And not only was it important for this um, logo type to be representative of the diversity of Black women, but also that there was a movement and a rhythm to the logo. So we made sure to show examples of how the logo worked in this dynamic system. Um, I think it was Jordan on the second day of our presentation who said, oh my God, like I look at the logo and I can literally see us standing on a street corner. I can see us turning the corner. Um, this parade of, of women of all different expressions. Um, so we wanted to show a little bit about how that system works. It can be stacked. Uh, it can run along the bottom of a piece of collateral or around a wristband. Um, and it kind of becomes a chant that says, March for Black Women, March for Black Women. Um, black Women, March for Black Women. And it can also be used as a framing device, as you can see on the left. Here is the letter mark that we came up with. Um, we loved the way that the M and the W here were in conversation and they're exchanging energy and how that speaks to um, the ongoing conversations and evolutions that are happening within this community. I'm gonna skip through these. Um, and then there was uh, the conversation about color. So I'm actually gonna jump forward and then jump back. The colors that we originally were working with that the brand um, behind March for Black Women was working with were a gold and a black. Um, we decided to evolve those colors, um, keeping the gold, transforming the black into a really deep purple to add a little bit of complementary contrast and a little bit more um, depth and visual interest and richness and then complementing those with these secondary colors um, that represent pieces of the San Diego landscape. So we had the California poppy orange, we had the deep blue of the ocean, um, the cream that's kind of a sandy color, and then the sunset pink. And we talked a lot about themes of black joy, black resistance and black community and how those could come through in the visuals. Um, for us, these colors when seen all together carry a weight and a boldness, but also a vibrancy and a joy and an exuberance that captured all of those different things. Um, so we combine those into these uh, gradient packs that could be used as backgrounds or could be used as color fills on different elements uh, that you'll see later on in the brand that represent black joy which is light and bright and full of color and then black resistance which has um, a heavier tone and then kind of a stronger tone to it. We thought also a lot about accessibility. Um, a lot of the work that that is done to sort of talk about um, talk about the organization happens on social so there's a lot of text on images and we wanted to make sure that this color palette was accessible that it was easy to read text um, so that everybody could feel feel welcome um, we chose this font kufan black because it had some of those fun quirky elements um, to, to a couple of the letter forms like the A and the W that felt like they mirrored the quirkiness of the logo type. This was the secondary um, headlines. And then using Open Sans um, just as our body copy, super easy to read. And then a challenge that um, Kelsey and Jordan had for us was they were like, we really love collage work. We want to represent the multiplicity of the experience. 
Um, there's something just really joyful and beautiful about collage. Um, historically, it's been used to for vision boards, but also for in uh, kind of like archival contexts and things like that. And uh, I was incredibly proud that the team took up this challenge. So we created this kit that would allow them to um, mix and remix various elements, and we break that down here. The first element is photography, um, putting black women again at the center, um, and images of the marsh at the center, and then complementing that with images of the place, so waves or cacti or the cityscape. And then having these um, elements that were hand drawn by a couple of our designers custom for, for the brand and being able to mix those in and create, um, create a sense of, of movement. Backgrounds that pull in the colors and paper texture. And then again, organic shapes representing the fluid structure of the collective, um, but also acting as frames or um, devices for creating focal points. So you're looking at all of this and you're like, okay, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> How does this all come together? Uh, what our recommendation was is thinking about it as sort of a modular formulaic system. Um, so taking three or four elements and placing them together. Here's another example of that. And then brand applications. Um, we had a lot of fun with this kind of dreaming about all of the different ways that the brand could come through. Social media was a big one. We created an entire library of uh, pre-made templates on Canva so that our client could go in and not have to start from scratch. We built things that they could edit, things that they could copy over and build off of. Here are more examples of those. Um, we showed them what a website could look like. We showed them what pins could look like in a few different colors. Here's the pin on Jordan's jacket. What t-shirts could look like. Um, a handout with the four demands and a collage on it. Uh, posters and advertisements. And a flag, which we're super excited about and hope they make. The rally flag. And that's it. All right, we're going to switch it back over, Rodrigo. Sorry, I gave you no warning. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Just yeah, see, uh, seeing that again, I, I think, is just... Jordan and Kelsey, what are your thoughts seeing that, seeing that again? This is like your second, second presentation <laughs> of the work. What's in your head? I'm just like overwhelmed with one, that this happened over the course of a weekend and two, like the amazing like attention to like the heart of what we're doing. Um, I love the fact that like we had our first meeting, uh, our midway check-in point, and me and Jordan gave some like really like pivoting feedback in the way that y'all were able to take it and like run with it. And I don't know, it, it's just very clear that it was done like from a place of like love and care. And I just am so, every time I looked at them, cause I've been on the canvas scrolling through, like it's just so amazing. So yeah. <laughs> I agree. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed in the best way. And those gradients, like, I just, I love the sophistication of this. And I love the fact, I love how much you all listen to us. Like every time I look at it, it's just so clear to me how deeply you listen. Um, because, you know, we needed something that we could run with. Not every Black woman who's stepping up to the plate is going to be a designer. So we needed to be able to pop into Canva and just like feel like we were artists and making something great, even though we don't have all those technical chops and you delivered on that. So thanks. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, you can really feel that coming through in, in the work. Just, I think the layers, what I love is, is 
like that breaking down of the collage, you know, it's like telling the story layer by layer by layer. Cause it's not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so multidimensional, I think the message and, and what we're communicating. So to, to really develop a design system around that in for, I mean, it's, it's stunning. I mean, I'm, I'm, imp I'm impressed and I worked on it over the weekend. <laughs> like it just, it was really, I mean, just, just really inspiring to see that come together. So Can cool. I chime in just a little bit about how the digital experience actually would, gave us more insight than when you, what you would usually get in mm -hmm. a live presentation? Um, so since we did it digitally on Zoom, we had the chat option open. And it was really cool because our client, like three slides in, they're like, yes, like exclamation point, like all the emojis kind of stuff. And you don't get that when you're presenting live. Um, it's kind of like what's going on in people's head. Um, but we got a little bit of that. So I thought that was really interesting and unique. And um, I don't know, I can't say enough about uh, how thoughtful the design system is. Um, so props to the design team for that. But I just wanted to kind of chime in with how, how that is actually kind of like a bonus of the digital experience. So. Yeah, and, and hearing from um, Chessa and Lauren, like your, you know, your reflections um, on the experience and kind of seeing it all come together, just sort of curious to, to hear what your thoughts are, especially kind of getting to, getting to say these words again and look at these visuals again, like how are you feeling? So I will say I was, I was rather shocked at how quickly uh, the words flew from like, and the whole, how well the process with the strategy team, strategy and copy team specifically, uh, how well, how quickly that got running and how well it ran given my prior like expectations of nothing being able to be accomplished in like 48 hours. Um, I was just like, oh, wow. Like, oh, we have, we have a manifesto or we have like the base for a manifesto. Like, oh, we are really working. I I'll say what really helped for me is that the clients, they, um, they had such a clear voice and clear, they were very clear on what wasn't them uh, or what wouldn't work for them. And that was super helpful. Uh, and, and they were just so poetic. Like a lot of the inspiration that I got came from them because I was just like, oh, from the ratchet to the righteous to the real, yes. Uh, I can go, I can, I can create from this. Um, so they, <laughs> that Kelsey and Jordan, they were just great to work with and listen to uh, and be inspired from, so. And if I could quickly just like love directly on the strategy team, like uh, as one of the people who like writes most of the posts, it was just so beautiful to see, like you said, our voice represented and like to highlight what Shessa brought up, like having black women on this project was so important and our voice being translated in a way that felt real um, and not like, how would a black person talk, right? Like you, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that was so magical, um, the ways that you were able to streamline um, all of what we gave to, to you to make something amazing. Like, I'm just over the moon. Yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a very fun experience. Um, and it, it felt really good to be able to just, just highlight uh, and create a create a system that will work and that felt right for you in the collective. Um, yeah, I just saw this team bring their A game and then and then go the extra mile. And part of that was the enthusiasm and the storytelling, Jordan and Kelsey, that you brought to the table. Um, echoing Lauren, I think one of my favorite phrases from the weekend was that you were you referred to the collective as biorhythmic um and you talked about the magic of black women and um i i was telling the design team this when we were still sort of in uh brainstorm mode but i literally went to my personal like black woman joy board and like started pulling down colors and images um 
and it it was so special and important to so many of the women on the team to be able to say oh this is this is actually for me <laughs> like what what do i want to see what do i want to show to jordan and kelsey that feels like this is for us we're creating a space for us um you guys also talked we asked you about historic symbols that you might want to use and you said no we're building a black future like we're looking we're looking at what's the future going to look like and that was so inspiring to kind of be able to shed um these preconceived ideas of what black revolution and black and black resistance look like um and to just start new Yeah, truly, truly fantastic job. And I think Kelsey and Jordan, as a client, you were so fantastic to work with. Like you were, you answered, you were there, answered every email, <laughs> answered every call. You sat with us, you talked with us, you shared, you opened up, you were honest what a fantastic collaboration. I mean, the, so much of what makes good work is, is, you know, the input that you're able to give and that energy you're able to give us as designers and creatives in order to, to do the work. And you, you so brought that from the very beginning. So I just want to say thank you so much for, for, for being our collaborators in this and, and being there every step of the way. Um, it's, it's truly remarkable to see what we can, we can make happen when we set our minds to it. Right. And I can't wait to keep collaborating with you. We have more plans. We've got, this is, it's not going to stop here. We're going to keep going. And I'm so excited to see what we can continue making together. Um, and I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for, um, for being here with us and doing this with us. So, um, yeah. I interrupt just one second you know I wanted to say that I'm really thankful for the fact that it was a sprint and that it was 48 hours because that forced us to make dis clear decisions about the audience that we were speaking to mm -hmm. and you know we we always are prioritizing black women but logistically and practically we also have to speak to accomplices and at some point you know we had put all these ideas and you, you all were just like you know okay who who's the audience and I was just like you know what just 99% this for black women, but I, I really think that, you know, that time constraint helped us to go in that direction. And I feel like it just made it even more meaningful. And I'm just very thankful. And I think to that point, the time constraint forces you to like really dig deep and say, okay, now who, who really is like, who's the bread and butter? Who are we really, who needs this message the most? Um, is, is usually always right. I think you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it was such a good, such a good call because you always sort of, you know, put yourself aside to try to educate others or talk to others. And there's so much work you're always doing on behalf of other people. And it's like, just to take, take a step back and say, well, wait, like, how can we nourish like ourselves, our community center us here and really to ask for that? you know, there's like, there's courage in that. There's, there's a lot in that, that I admire and have learned from and will continue to build on. Um, and, and I'm so glad that our team was able to really hear that and make that shift, right. And, and just go for it. Um, and so that really speaks to who we had on the team, right. And how we went about our work. Um, so I think that's really such an important call out. Well, I know we are at, um, we are at 6 p.m. already. I could keep going. Oh, no. I, I could, oh. I, we will. Um, Let's but keep going. we, we, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going folks. You, you hang out. We got this, we got this webinar booked for hours, right? Like <laughs> no one's kicking us out of this webinar. So, um, should we open it up for, for Q and A? When is part yeah. two? Uh, next weekend. I don't know who's ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that that's a great idea, Stacey. I was actually going to prompt us to drop our questions in the Q&A uh, section if, if we want to have any questions asked to anybody on the panel, anyone specifically. Um, 
just the other flip side of the coin when it comes to the sprint. Yeah, it allows you to kind of focus deeply on a specific audience, but then it also gets you to leave your ego at the door and just make quick decisions too. Like when it comes to design, like it is not a design democracy. Sometimes it's a design dictatorship to just have to get it done. But it's that belief in the better solution rather than like, oh, my solution or stuff like that. So, um, and also to echo what Stacy was saying, it is a lot, the success of these projects uh, has a lot to do with the team that we put together, but then also so on the client, if you don't have the right client, these things just do not come together as magically as this one did. So yeah, it's the right creatives, it's the right client, it's the right city, it's the right partner like Raygun. Um, like, okay. <laughs> and, um, and so that's all I have to say. Um, so the inspirational t- takeaway, so I just kind of want to get to the Q&A, but the inspirational takeaway that we want with this is, hmm. The world's not good enough to stay the same. So that's why we do what we do. Um, so with that said, um, we'll go ahead and, and move it to questions and plugs. Stacy, um, do we have some questions? I don't know. I wanna, yeah, I do we want to ask a few questions? Um, yeah. There's a few in here if we are going to take the time for it. So Renee's asking, could you talk a little bit about your process? What workshops... Uh, you did to pull out the ideas, goals, opportunities. Yeah, a, a lot of that sort of happened prior to the sprint. You know, we spent time with Kelsey and Jordan um, to kind of talk about um, what, you know, what were their priorities? What would help them do their work um, really well? And what, what could we uh, help them create that would enable that? Um, so, so really the, a lot of that, that process starts in the planning, right. And sort of writing that creative brief. So everybody's on, on the same page, uh, leading up to it. Um, and then, yeah, jumping into like process on the strategy side. I don't know. It was a, it was a lot of free form. It was a lot of brainstorming, a lot of Google docs. <laughs> I don't know, Lauren, what works? Oh, Who man. knows? So many Google Docs open at once. I was always like, wait, where are we? What document are we in? Where are you? Yeah, where are you writing? Yeah. Where are you writing? Uh, yeah, I would say we, I think in terms of the model, we started off, like, I think in terms of every session, we start off with saying like, okay, let's talk about this as a group. And then we break down into smaller groups of, okay, the strategy team versus the copy. Um, and some of us straddle both fences like we'd go back and forth between writing and uh working on the overall strategy um and then some of the writers are like nope i write in silence like give me my marching orders let's talk about this uh and so yeah i would say the overall structure was brainstorm as a group then identify exact um tasks to work on and then come back together as a group we can uh, connect, say, okay, how do we feel about this? Can you hop on and give me feedback over here? Uh, so it was really, we worked really well in the sense of people asked for the help that they needed or the, you know, double checking. Does this feel right? Does this sound right? Do you think we're capturing the client's essence here? If not, hey, let's think about trying it this way. Or maybe if we reword it that way, uh, it'll flow. So like, shout out to the strategy and copy team. I, I see you here. Um, it, it was great. I was like, all right, I could do this again with people like this. Yes. <laughs> yes. I hope so. Yeah. I think what's interesting is not having worked with all of you before you kind of like you, you start out with just like, all right, who, who does what here? Who wants to do what? Like, yeah. And, and being able to, to just kind of like, you, you do need to advocate for yourself in that way too. Like, here's what I'm good at. Here's what I want to contribute. Um, so I think on the strategy and copy side, it was a little bit, a little bit fluid. Maybe um, Chess on the design side, kind of curious about, you know, what, what about your process kind of worked and, and how yeah. you figured that out. Um, our process was, I wanted to make sure not only that we were listening to the client, but to each other and that I was hearing the team and um, not dictating the design. Um, So we started off with introductions, a little bit of the same of what are you interested in working on? What are your strengths? Like, what do you want to own in this process? 
Um, and that was sort of first dibs. Some people were like, I want to do color. I want to do type. Like I can do illustration. Um, in terms of creative ideation, I, I think, oh my gosh, it's so funny because we were moving so fast, but I think I asked everybody to go away um, or to go and work independently for 45 minutes and come back with um, a mood board or sketches or just like thoughts around what they had heard from the client after we reviewed um, from the initial brief together. Uh, and that really gave people the space to um, show which pieces of the project they were interested in and thinking about, but also uh, just for us to get like so many ideas and then bring them back together and say, okay, there, there is a theme emerging here and a theme emerging here. Let's kind of go in these two directions, show it to strategy in a few hours um, and just get their gut, gut reaction and then move from there. Um, yeah, so it was a like fluid, right? Yeah, like it was, it was actually like, very fluid. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot I, of like stuff happening at the same time. <laughs> so it was like Slack messaging, like, does this align with what you're doing and kind of that back and mm -hmm. forth. So, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a really interesting, interesting process that way. Yeah. You always have the uh, the time clock kind of going on in the background too. So there's always these moments of like, "Hey, I don't want to panic you, but yeah. I kind of but I kind of want to panic you because we <laughs> need to get on with this." You know what I mean? So the, yeah. those are those are fun moments. Uh, but the good um, thing is you just push it off and, and go right on. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It. I tried to think of myself as more of a facilitator than a than like a creative director or something like that. Um, I, as somebody who is like creating like mental space in, in the different phases of the project, I think at one point on Sunday, I said, okay, guys, we are out of the questioning exploration phase. Like we are fully in the execution, making decisions, being confident about them phase. Um, so just like helping people shift sort of like their mental, um, mental space more so than, than dictating directly like this must be this hex code um, color. That's awesome. Liz, do we have any other questions popping up? Awesome. Gabs asked such a thoughtful question. She says, you said that design influences our behaviors and what we learn in society. Are there any ideas you had that seemed great, but that you left on the cutting room floor because of their potential negative impact? Another way of saying, what are some of the lessons you learned in the process that we can learn too? What, Gabs? Gabs, you're awesome. The best. <laughs> Maybe on the design side, you might have like a lot more on the, on the cutting room floor. Yeah. I would say for the strategy, some of the ideas we had or things that we put out there, um, we just asked the client or the client gave us very honest feedback of yeah. like, that doesn't feel right or um, that may not convey the message that we're trying to send. Um, so that was, I would say, listening to the client and asking them before versus um, thinking that you understand or know what would be best for them. Um, yeah. It's always like doing a gut check with them. Yeah, and doing and, and talking a lot about appropriation when it came to language, mm -hmm. um, you know, in order to, to kind of um, really talk about and illustrate the expansiveness of of the, the black women in the community and being careful about, you know, not just putting labels like a, like a word soup together to, to try to call people out individually. Like we need to work that in in a much more thoughtful way. So we're not sort of co-opting or like appropriating anyone else's identity for the sake of seeming, you know, like, like we're inclusive. If yeah. That, if that makes sense. Yeah, or like staying away from like trendy language or mm -hmm. um, language that, I don't know, kind of feels like an SEO, uh, <laughs> like it's written just for SEO and uh, staying authentic um, and real, like ratchet, righteous and real. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to that. I believe, yeah, <laughs> that's the tagline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that would be, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say that would be a takeaway. It's just... Yeah. 
Well, one of one of my takeaways um, I, I learned from Kelsey. Kelsey is great about taking screenshots and communicating back with the team. And I was so enamored with everything that I'm just like looking at the screen and I'm forgetting that I'm a part of the collective. Now I'm just Jordan, you know. And so, <laughs> you know, Kelsey like took the screenshot. She takes it back, and then we have this critical moment where Chessa had hand lettered this gorgeous version of of you know our our logo and there's so much thoughtfulness into it and and um that was put into it and then you know somebody on the team was like you know i hear the story i love the story but i i need it to be a little bit more uniform and so we come back and you all just took that and ran with it but it was just it was such a huge moment again just like lauren said like you can't just assume that you know what's best for the group. Like you, you got to communicate um, and see what's up. But also, shout out to that hand lettered piece. It was gorgeous. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I remember that moment exactly. And I think that that before we got that feedback in the morning, we we had on Sunday morning after we had a presentation on Saturday, we felt you know the work was being pretty well received. I think in the morning we started with this 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 idea this notion um, of just because we got a good response yesterday or last night does not mean that we cannot challenge this solution further. So we were already open ears and open eyes about like how we can actually push it better. We weren't just going to sit on you know getting good reactions the night before. And so when that feedback came in, we were all prepped for it. We're like, okay, here we go. This is where we start. We start here. We start there. We add depth here. Um, you know, we, more dynamic systems, like everyone's thinking outside the box now. So it was really interesting uh, to, to hear that. And um, I think that that challenge from the client then also our challenge internally as a team to want like a more uh, evolved solution. Um, that's, that's awesome, you know, because you're exhausted after a sprint like this, but to have that extra push uh, forward, I think is, is, is a testament to, to, to the model the creatives and, and, and the vision of, of this whole weekend. Love it. How, how are we feeling? You want one, one more? We got it in us? I feel we, like still, have, we still have attendees here, so. <laughs> I feel like we have to talk about like the earthquake. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh my God. Rolling blackouts. And Lauren the blackouts. has a flu. And the flu. And you <laughs> had the flu. My goodness. Oh my goodness. I had, to, I had to kick the client out of the room and that was horrible. I regret oh. that and it was horrible. Um, no, that, no, don't feel bad. It was, uh, the right, it was the right decision given the frame, but also... <laughs> I'm so mad that you kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another one of these challenges and you do it digitally because when you're in person, you can like kind of, you know, get the client and move them into like the kitchen area. Oh, hey, look, there's, there's some food. There's Let's snack. chat a little bit, you know, and you pull them out because what's happening in the creative room is that all these ideas are, are getting like, okay, we're, we're making final decisions on this and all that and that. Uh, and so, um, to preserve the magic of the reveal, you have to uh, pull the client out. But I remember that, and I, I still um, have feelings about it. And once again, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the earthquake was weird too. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, we had um, yeah, we had blackouts here too. We had bad internet, um, heat wave, yeah, heat wave. Yes, my goodness. Crazy. But you know, Rodrigo, I do want to say that um, that was actually a, a key trust building moment for me. Um, and that was one of the biggest uh, lessons that I learned, um, you know, because I, I was very present to the fact earlier on that this team might not have any Black people on it. I was, I was very present to that. And then, you know, like I was, I felt reassured though, Stacy, because I knew your relationship to story. And I was like, okay, Stacy can, Stacy can hold the fort down, you know? And then you all talked about how you were expanding and how you were selecting and how, you know, how you were choosing to, to lead out the teams. And that gave me comfort. But I still, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like, this is a very, this is a very blackety, blackety, black experience. Like, 
And I realized that I couldn't even turn off my code switch. Like when I was trying to deliver what March for Black Women is like to you all, like, and that's when I knew I was like, this is deep, you know? Um, but anyway, when I illegally popped into the uh, design <laughs> session, and I got a chance to see the mood board. Um, I was like, oh, I don't know what the final product is, but they're gonna, they're gonna nail it. Awesome. Awesome. Can I ask a question to Jordan and Kelsey? Um, kind of a follow up to what you just said. So Chessa was smart and like asked flat out, okay, how many black women are going to be on this? <laughs> I, I didn't. I was just like hoping and praying, like, come on, Jesus, make me not the only one, please. <laughs> Uh, so I'm curious, uh, I would love to hear from Jordan and Kelsey on how did, without having any kind of like assured guidelines or looking at team leads who were um, Black women, what, what made you trust the process going into it? So in one of our initial meetings, I straight up asked what the demographics were. And Stacey actually said to you, and I was like, okay, cool. I like what I, I like what I <laughs> I love so much <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really important to me um, because I think no matter, you know, I, I knew Stacy before this, I think she's amazing, but I think it's really important that voices, that the people who are being prepared for are also centered in the, the work leading up to it. Um, and so that really helped me with the buy-in. Um, that it was going to be something that one I would appreciate, but also that I could take back to my other co-organizers who are much more critical um, than I am, um, and that it was something that fully represented us. Because it'll be um, unfortunate if we got all of these like beautiful things, but it didn't read like us or feel like us, and then we'd have to scramble to modify it. And I think the fact that we got things that like are very much out to gate us um, is absolutely because the the Design Sprint actually listen to and follow the lead of Black women. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I was so happy when you asked the question. Like, I've been, I've been working on, um, I've been working on being nicer. I haven't always been very nice, uh, <laughs> especially when it comes to, like, talking about Black issues, you know. So sometimes I've been, like, shifting my questions but when Kelsey went ahead and just asked I was just like praise 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 um but it was it was also like an exercise and just saying let me just see what's gonna happen you know what I mean not let me not call the end result before it actually happens you know and um in my mind which is a little bit different from Kelsey's I was like even if they can't create something that is us Hopefully they will create something that is gorgeous and being as resourceful as we are, we can just, we can just shape shift with it, you know? Um, but yeah, you, you all rose to the occasion in every single way. Absolutely. And I think, you know, yeah. I so appreciate those questions and we need to ask those of each other. We need to ask those of ourselves. We can't just wait for other people to ask us that and put us on the spot. Like we need to internalize those questions and look around and say, who am I working with? Who has access? Like, who can I bring work to? Who can I help? Like those, those are questions we all, and especially accomplices need to be asking every single day. Um, and so I, you know, for me, like doing right by the client is, is absolutely number one, and knowing that we needed to have a team that was well represented, but also just of really talented people. Like, look at these, look at these like creatives, look at what you're all doing. You all have your own agencies. You all like, we're all doing such good work. There's no excuse for a lack of diversity. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, no, no, no excuse for it. So I I'm very proud. Thank you. I'll just chime in a little bit on being on the receiving end of those very direct questions very early on. I loved it. I love, I love those kind of like, get, get the nice city out of the way. Let's just get to it. Like, what, what, what do we care about? Like, what do we need to be focused on? Like, what, what are the, the, 
the pillars that are going to drive this forward. And um, I, I can only speak for uh, myself in good measure and say, like, we welcome that. We welcome those questions. We welcome the honesty. We welcome uh, the candor because uh, because um, we don't have time to mess around. It's 48 hours. We had to do this right or we don't. So make sure the right people are in place. Make sure that people are listening and stuff like that. So I I welcomed it. I thought it was great. So thank you for being direct with us. I appreciate yeah, that. absolutely. And to that point, uh, I would just like to put a plug out there. Uh, even when you have clients that aren't necessarily asking, well, how many black women or what does your team look like? Uh, remember, remember this, remember the work that was done by this array of talented uh, group of people, many of whom were black women, women of color, Asian women. Uh, and remember them when you're staffing for a project that isn't explicitly black or isn't explicitly yes. PLC. Um, because we do good work all the time. <laughs> yes, all the time, all the time. It's and not like, only work, oh, sorry, and not ahead. only work about, around race and gender and social good. We yes. also do good work for other things. Um, yes, like, so hire absolutely. Us for those as well. I got you, Lauren. I'm on the same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an opportunity to throw some plugs in? Or do we have more questions, Liz, or what's going on? Happy to plug. I was just, I was just, I'm making this statement everywhere this week, everywhere I'm in <laughs> at Design Week. I'm like, and remember. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, like, we are here, like, this is, like, look at this work, you know, like, it is gorgeous, and the process, like, and it's not even the end work, it's, like, the, the, the thought and the care that goes into the work, like, oh, that, that right there is, this is exceptional stuff, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't just start and end with, like, with race and it, it can be anything it should be everything toilet paper <laughs> toilet paper girl yeah third what what industry is next for you lauren you want some toilet paper do it Charmin's gonna can call we, can, we, can we also talk a little bit about like after this i guarantee you the design team will be following each other they already are they're going to be collaborating together moving forward you know like you have the experience of having this 48 hour sprint so if you run your own studio you can hit up one of the, the strategists or copywriters so we're building this network this nice diverse talented creative network with every event and uh you know 15 people for this sprint now we're, we're forever connected we're a family that's cool hire these people yeah. This is it. This is the top of the game. I'm telling you, I've worked with them. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Plug for toilet paper. <laughs> In the chat. In the chat. Check it out, Lauren. Brand strategy. Make it happen. Oh, I love this. Thank you. That team. does seem like a perfect transition into plugs, though, if we want to share more about anyone else paper. <laughs> yes firebrand yeah sure um yeah hey everyone so uh, as i said at the beginning of the presentation i am um creative director slash designer um and my strategy my my studio is called firebrand creative house you can find it at www.firebrand.house i will also type it in the chat um yeah, and we do primarily branding and identity design work, but also uh, UI, UX, and web design, and print and packaging design. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Liz. Liz was so ready. She was Liz, like, let's plug Liz people. Liz her list, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so you ready. can find, find more about uh, my work there. Lauren, you want to go? Yeah, uh, thanks, Liz. <laughs> uh, so... I am the founder of a marketing, branding, and communication strategy agency called Crate Agency, C-R-A-T-E Agency. Um, we, yeah, we do work along those lines. We also, um, we house two brands that we own and we create for up under that portfolio outside of our external consulting clients. Um, they're SD Melanin and Culture Plus Cuisine. And, the premise of both of those brands are really 
creating for uh, diverse communities and building and producing unique experiences for them in content. So we love to talk about all things branding, strategy, communications, equity. Uh, yeah. yeah. And Lauren, you have another event coming up on Saturday. Is that right? <laughs> I do. Tell me. <laughs> uh, so we, are, as a part of San Diego's Design Week, we are hosting a series of discussions called e Equality by Design. And the premise is really to focus on centering inclusivity and equity at the beginning of your design process. And so the discussion on Saturday is going to be centered around the food and beverage industry. This Saturday, this Saturday, the 12th at 1 p.m. PST. So and you can find it on the San Diego Design Week website. Amazing, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, for this, for all the work you've done, for this event, for getting to showcase it during this, um, you know, week week of celebration and design, um, I am Regis I'm truly register to vote. Register to vote. Oh my register god! Register to vote. That's complete, what I'm plugging. Yeah, complete the census. Awesome. Complete and then actually, the actually vote, and yeah. don't leave it at that. Yeah, headcount.org. We had a we had a great. Um, homebodies the other night um so go there to check that you're not been erased from the voter roll because they're doing some some shady stuff oh so, so do that check that you're on there register to vote it's a critical time i don't have to say that i'm also always going to plug good measures to follow us on all the handles join the newsletter our boy alex spends a lot of time writing those so uh and they're in they're a delight to read <laughs> they, they truly are they really the, are yeah. <laughs> Happy like, newsletter wow. reader. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have a newsletter, but maybe I should start one. So just email me <laughs> and maybe I'll start one. <laughs> Raygun. I don't, madebyraygun.com. Check us out. Um, I like to plan events if you didn't know that already. So um, please connect with us on, on uh, Instagram, madebyraygun. Um, although just call us Raygun. And, um, and we would love to connect. Um, there's, there's so much work. There's so much good to be had. And uh, there are people here that want to do the work with you. So let's, let's connect. Let's keep working. Um, thank you to the March for Black Women. Thank you, Jordan and Kelsey, for this. Um, we can't wait to keep working with you. This is so fantastic. We're All super right. excited. We're super excited. Thank you. Can I can I say a little bit of something uh, for March for Black Women? Yes. Um, there are people who are watching this now and who will be watching this that are going to want to uh, step up and step in to help support March for Black Women. Um, make sure to follow us on our Instagram. Um, and if there are resources that you know are available, just ping us and say, this resource is available. And we'll let you know if it's something that um, that will help the effort. Um, but thank you all so much. This has been the best surprise of 2020. Oh, thank you. What a shining light. And accomplices too. Please follow March for Black Women on Instagram. Sign up um, for, you have, an, you have an email list? You, you sh we're going to make you an email list. You got a newsletter sign up? Yeah, we've got a list. Uh, we've got a few things. Got some somewhere. We, we're do, gonna activate. Uh, we have a survey that you can fill out. It's on the Instagram and you can choose which demand really speaks to you and that you want to support. And in the future, we will have work groups uh, moving to there, moving mm -hmm. there. And um, we also, with our Black Women Deserve Fund, where we're making financial deposits back to uh, Black women, um, you'll also be able to contribute financially to that. So, yes. Absolutely. Make sure to check that out. That's, um, you know, collecting and distributing uh, funds from the community to um, women in need, Black women in need. Um, find out more on their website, on Instagram. Um, we need all the support we can get from the community and uh, to show the love and help lift up, um, lift up this collective. So 
Thank you for all, all the wonderful work you're doing, Jordan and Kelsey. Thank you to every one of our creatives on this panel, all of you that have tuned in. We are so grateful. I don't really want this to end, so I might just keep rambling until there are no attendees left because this is kind of like, this is the last, the last thing, but I really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you, and we love you.